Number one. And today's hey. guest, we've got ex-bank robber, Mr. Ian Blink McDonald. First and foremost, Ian, I just want to say thanks for coming on the show, mate. Not a problem. Um, it's a pleasure, James. Thanks a lot. Uh, you know, well, uh, the public won't know, I actually know you. Mm -hmm. And I uh, actually know your dad as well for Victoria, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, your other, I know all your family, I know Billy and Jojo. Uh -huh. So Hi. it's good to see you Hello, again, It's mate. good to see you, mate. You're looking well. Yeah, thank you. How's thank life been treating you? Oh, life's been treating me okay, mate. I've been out of serious crime for five or six years. Mm -hmm. But for if I can just start off with saying the last six months, mm -hmm. I feel as if, if I'm still getting hounded with Strathclyde Police. I, I've moved into Townhead. Uh, I've been there 18 months. And uh, about seven months ago, I was going down to a certain sunbed shop in the town, which I won't mention. And give them an advertisement and uh, <laughs> I've been chatting this ghetto up and uh, we ended up becoming an item after 10 weeks and the first date the first date uh, I had with her uh, I ended up meeting her in Merchant City we went to Metropolitan trying to impress her with my gyro you know what I mean <laughs> 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 uh, we went to Metropolitan we went to Brown's and we went to a place called Anchor Line, just at George Square. Fancy. And I was in there with a few friends. And uh, the night was going well. And uh, 10 past one, the, the, the pub had finished. And we'd come out looking into each other's eyes. You know what I mean? I hadn't even kissed her yet. Mm. And uh, before you know it, my hand's up in the air. <laughs> straight out the door. I'm police, I'm police. Have you got a gun on you? So all the cocktails from Metropolitan Bar and Brown's. And Anchor Line just zoomed right out of me. I became sober. I went, what the fuck's going on here? And she shouted, Ian, don't shout. Shout? I was I was dumbstruck. Mm -hmm. So uh, I said, I says, no. I says, do I think I've, I've got one of my... I, I says, I couldn't do my trousers. I says, it'll be firing blanks <laughs> after, after this. <laughs> and, and so that, this, this wee copper walked her. Uh, I was in plain clothes. And a, and a woman, said 40, 50, and I, I thought they were a, a couple of London tourists or something. But it turns out they were for the anti-organised crime unit. And they says to me, they says, Ian, they says, uh, listen, have you got a gun? I says, no, I've not got any gun. I says, what's this about? It says, it'll all be explained. And uh, it says, right, we're going to take you up to your house and search it up in Townhead which I thought was highly unusual. I thought I'd just took to the police station, you know what I mean? Did I have a warrant? Well, when, when I got into the car, it became a bit of a joke, so it did. And uh, it was it was me weekend, it was a bank holiday, and we got into the car, and the woman, the guy, the London tourist couple, I called them, she was in the front, and there was a driver, and the, the detective sergeant, I think his name was Gary, he's in the back, and I says, look, I've got cocaine on me. I says, are you going to keep me in for this? He went, not interested. He says, we've got good information. It's an intelligence-led operation. Have you got a gun in the house? Even a plastic gun? I says, no. I says, where's this come from? He says, we'll explain. So the woman in the front, uh, and, I, and I says to them in the car, I went, I says, I thought you two were a, a, a couple on holiday. And she turned around for the front seat and she went, I'm going to put them out in them. So this guy, Gary, was in charge of the operation, went, no one of you have not got a boyfriend. Mm -hmm. And the driver went, cool down, kids. So, so, this was the so coppers that were on? Aye, in the car. And it, so it kind of lightened up. So he's cool down, kids, this is serious. So we drove up to my, my, my house, my flat. I've never heard of that. You and uh, so... Because the says, they says, we have got a warrant in the car. I went, I need bother. And uh, well, I says, well, I'm not letting them in the door anyway, for it. But we drove by my house and I had to say to them, look, reverse back. It was a comedy of uh, errors. So we got up to the house and uh, we get in. And uh, so I'm cuffed. I'm cuffed at the back. One of the young coppers, there was about seven or eight of them. And there was armed police on the outside. And uh, he went like, do you mind again get this cocaine out of your pocket? I went, aye, and he's put it at the table. And he uh, says, what's there? I says, a couple of gram. And he went, come on, now, there's about two or three gram there. Well, he would know. <laughs> he would know. <laughs> He's probably snorting it, know what I mean? Because <laughs> this, this young guy was only about 25. So 
but I'm still a little worried and I'm going, what the fuck, where is this cane for, you know what I mean? So he says, okay, and he says, look, he says, uh, we're going to put a camera on, search your house. They say, so nothing here. I piped up and I went, look, if we want to tell you, we've got a £10 bit of hash. You know what I mean? He went, not, not interested. So uh, then he says to me, right, he says, right, we're going to put the camera on, give your name, so give my name and all that, blah, 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 blah. Uh, then he says, look, he says, here's the warrant. He says, it's for a sheriff Finlay, for Glasgow Sheriff Court. And it was issued in the 2nd of May, it's solely for firearms. And uh, this was the 4th of May. So I'm saying to myself, so they've had this for two days and they've no acted on it. So how, how they, they must have been falling into browns and whatever. But to this day, I still don't know where it was. So anyway, they, they, they've done the search, they've done the search. And uh, after a couple of minutes, the, the, the camera's on, he says, take Ian's cuffs off from the back, put them in the front. He's well behaved. Because I was shit myself. Mm -hmm. I thought they were going to plant me with a gun or something. Mm -hmm. But to, 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 be, to be fair and honest, uh, years ago, I wouldn't say this, but now I'm mature and older. Uh, you've got good cops, bad cops, good prison officers, bad prison officers. Mm -hmm. So these seemed quite quite, quite good uh, police, you know what I mean? Because it says, no, no, they says, we, we're going to restrict. They says, we're even going to wreck your house. <laughs> they done me a turn. <laughs> they were in all the cupboards. I had about five bags of uh, stuff I threw out. Mm -hmm. So at the end, yeah, they says to me, do you want to come into the room and all that? I says, I'll just sit here. So the, the rest of them are turning on the couch. She's in here, there. Then uh, the, the search went on for just over an hour. And they come in and they say, Ian McDonald. They says, we're going to charge you with uh, what looks like cannabis and cocaine. I thought they weren't interested in that. That that that's that's what I thought. That that's what they says to us, know what I mean? But uh, also when I mentioned doing it George Square in front of the armed police, when I says no, I've only got a gun doing my thing me, and I says I've got a bit of Charlie and the detective sergeant says this is in look, I did say that, but that these these armed police are fair juice in cocaine as well. And while we were in the flat, I made a blunder for the hash, they weren't bothering about that either. But what I say is about 10 minutes later when I'm sitting there, and I, I was, then I started getting drunk, I'm going to shout, what about the hash at the bedside cabinet? And they all went, shh, mm -hmm. as if to say, look, so they come in, says you were reported to Procreator Fisco, turned it off and they went, bye. I went, bye, is this real? <laughs> so, so they went away and they phoned up the first date. She went, are you in the police station with one of the phones uh, which you can smuggle in? I says, I'm in my kitchen. I says, you're away. So she got a taxi down. So it'll be a first date I'll never forget. Is, that, is, she, is she still stuck by you as well? Uh, uh, well, James, to tell you the truth, run, any, run. Any, any, other, any other scene last year, wouldn't they? But uh, I'm glad to say that she, she stuck by mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're still going together just now. Her name's Ashley. I'll not tell her certain name. Sure She's Faber Mullock. And, uh, well, but Mullock says it all. <laughs> <laughs> it says it all. I think she was in the gringo. I think she was in the gringo when she was younger. And uh, you know, but Mullock as well as me. You know, aye. I mean, it's just it's not it's but so she's that's what it's all started with. But that then I go. But in. she's a lovely lassie, uh -huh. and uh, well, she told me to say that. But she's uh -huh. a lovely lassie mm -hmm. anyway, and we're still together, and she stays with me, mm -hmm. and uh, she's a worker and all that. Like me, I'm not a worker. I'm just a layabout, but. Uh, so, so that was one instance, and about another six, seven months ago this year, I went to Tesco in Socky Hall Street, and uh, I'm a club card member, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Building up your points, uh, you? So this was the second incident this year, and I'm getting hassle. So I went to get the door, and I bought a few provisions, and uh, I'd bought this steak, and they forgot to take the, they'll ask you if you go to take the tag off it. So it went off and the security guard, would you come in? I says, no bother. And I went like, I says, I says, there's my receipt there, mate. I says, you I'm a shoplifter. I says, that steak's six pound odds. I try to steal six million pound. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to steal six, a six pound steak. <laughs> so before you go to know it, the manager in that's come here and, and uh, she started shouting and I started shouting. I says, I can he's going to fuck yourselves, you know what I mean? I says, my club card member, I put this out. And uh, she says, uh, I'm getting the police for your cheek. I says, get the fuck who, who, who you want to get. So anyway, they got the, the police. The police came, as usual, handcuffed. And uh, it says, we're well, then you uh, breach of the peace. 
Right, the steak wasn't even thing because the receipt and that was there. So, got out the door, the woman shouted, uh, Mr. McDonald's. I went, yes. She says, uh, you're now barred from Tesco. <laughs> and I shouted back to her, put that on the list of pubs, clubs, <laughs> casinos, <laughs> strip clubs. Everywhere in Glasgow. Uh, airports, <laughs> supermarkets. <laughs> and uh, I missed something out. Where's your points going? That's what I want to know. So you're I'm basically barred for everywhere. <laughs> and this is me trying to lead a quiet Change life. Life. But do you think annoying that life a crime you're always going to get hassled to the day you die, do you and, think so? In Glasgow, I'm still well known, uh -huh. James. You're a I high profile about, name. And, and people still say to me, we know you've got a few quid. And I'm mm -hmm. trying to say, I'm out of crime and mm -hmm. all that. You know what I mean? Because you're a high profile name. I've got that name. tag. You've yeah, been in, like I say, you've been in 18 prisons. You've you did your 16 year sentence for a bank robbery. Yeah. You've made documentaries. You've wrote your book as well, which is an yeah. absolute belt of a book. We can get that on Kindle. Is, where else can we get that? You can get it in Kindle and uh, the, the, the company that done it, James, was uh, Mainstream uh -huh. Productions Main uh -huh. and uh, they were based in Edinburgh and they they folded three years ago. So it kind of fucked me up for getting their thingies. But it's some book. But Random stories. House have got the thingy to it. They, they, they've still got the rights to it. Uh -huh. But they've not published that again. But you can go on Amazon and buy it for 14 quid if there's any uh -huh. there. But it's on Kindle, so but it's still there. Book. The stories are unbelievable, and that's where we're going to go. We're going to go right back to the start where your life ah, started, that's fine, where eh? you get involved in all the crime and where you're now. So we'll go right back, mate, where you grew up. Well, thing me, I was uh, originally a comfy, a comfy black kill province, Mill, right? But a lot of people don't know that I was born in Springburn. Uh, I stayed in I stayed in Lindsay Street, and there was a Woolworths uh, behind it. And uh, it's just where the see where the, the Springburn Sports Centre is. Aye, it was it was a wee back. I was born in nineteen sixty one, so we were in a close. And by then, you never even had a toilet in the, in, the, in the flat, so it was a toilet in the close. And uh, I'm sure people as old as me will remember all this. <laughs> and uh, so I was I was born in a rotten row. Then my young brother Gary came along. He's a, a year younger than me, and uh, so. My memory, my memory, my earliest memory recollections is uh, we had to share this tin bath. It's not like your jacuzzis and your baths and all that now. And uh, the time, time I came six, I went to Albert Primary School. But my man used to take us into Woolworths. And I, I must have I must have been thinking we destined to be to lead a life of crime. You know the pick mix. Mm -hmm. I was always putting my hands in and stealing them. <laughs> so I think that's where so it started. <laughs> I got a wee start, you <laughs> know what I mean? But uh, all kidding aside, we moved up to Alan. I think Alan was born. I've got another year. I've got three brothers and a sister. Well, I had another brother, but he died John tragically. He'd have been older than me. So I don't know if he'd have been way older, whatever as well, but Hopefully it wouldn't have been. So we moved up to Proven Mill. We had to move for a bigger house and all that. And uh, we moved to this house in Drumpelia Street in Black Hill. I thought I was in heaven, whatever heaven was. We'd, it was a block house, you know, the block house with two bedrooms, mm -hmm. we had a bathroom, we had a big back garden. We, we were on more glory. We were fucking, fucking, hell, this, is, this is brilliant. But you've got to remember, James, it was brilliant. But Black Hill is not just a deprived area. It's one of the most deprived areas of Europe. But we still thought it was great. And uh, then my sister Tracy, she came along in 1970. She she was born there. And uh, had a lot of good times there. There was a, it's the M8 motorway now. And it was a canal. And it was, it finished, I went to Ridgway Primary School. And the canal ended at Ridgeway Primary School and it finished up at Baylison. So this canal, we used to get in a, a lot of good times. We'd get in with bows and arrows as young boys. And we'd be, there was water rats and all that, so we'd be trying to think we'd bird nesting. And, no, it was it was great times and we'd play two-man hunt with the boys that met up there. I don't know if you know about two-man two hunt. Two-man hunt, we used to play in Stone Hill Street. Aye, ah, and at, at the time, well, we get thing where you probably get a bar of chocolate after it, because mm. you're a lot younger than me. <laughs> we, we would get a piece of uh, lemon curd. <laughs> that, that was a big treat for us then, you know what I mean? 
And uh, so we, we had a lot of good times. And at that time, James, you could leave your door open. You no, know, these days, at uh, at that time, in the seventies, you could leave your, your your front door open, back door. Open. The, the drugs weren't the in the scene then. You no, know I mean, and, uh, I, I I could uh, honestly say, even though we came, came for a poor family, you know what I mean. We weren't the middle class or nothing. But I never came for a crime family. I'd like to state that as well. My mother was always a hard-working woman mm -hmm. and my dad was a, a, a hard-working guy as well. But what what happened, where it all went wrong, was uh, my man and dad they ended up falling out. And uh, my dad was a disciplinarian, by the way. And but before I forget this as well, to the way back, when I was five years, six years of age, he took me Ibrooks. He was a sort of a ranger supporter. Mm -hmm. If if he get cut, he wouldn't bleed uh, red. He would blue. bleed blue. And we moved to, as I say, Black Hill when I was six from Pelier Street. And Black Hill in Royston is known as, well, yeah. Celtic, Republican area. So we've got a lot of recollections. Eh? My dad didn't give a fuck, even, even though he wasn't a crook. But he loved Rangers. And so did I. I went at five. All my pals up in Black Hill used to try and change me. It was ingrained in me by then. I was the changing. Mm -hmm. So uh, my dad used to come along the street on a Saturday night. He'd go to other games. I'd go a few of them. And the ones I didn't, he'd come along steaming. My mum would be like, ah. I was about 10 then. Gary's nine, Alan was at four or something. Get out and fucking get him in here. People are getting murdered for less. You know what I mean? Singing his ash. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd fucking drag him in. And uh, there was two bedrooms in the house and uh, me, Gary, shared the bunk beds and Alan was a single bed. And uh, Tracy, when she was born 70, like she stayed my man dad's, but it was it was still good. But talking about the football again, us three were in the room, we were young boys, and uh, we heard my dad greeting. And we were going, what the fuck's up, my granny? What the fuck? So I went to investigate I've sneaked out the room. And I've says to my ma, I says, what's my dad greeting for? She went, oh, son, his team Rangers get beat today again. I went, what? So I went back into the room to Gary and Alan. I was in the top bunk. And uh, I went, oh, Granny McDonald's no deeds. I says, uh, Rangers get beat. And I was in the top bunk going, fuck that for a game of soldiers. <laughs> Your team gets beat. I says, and uh, you're, you're upset like that? I says, there must be more to life than that. So uh, that that's that 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 was that was kind of in Rumpelia Street, and I uh, made a lot of good friends there. I told you we were the canal and all that, and two man hunt. So at twelve years of age, we moved again to get. We needed another room because of my sister. So we moved to Proven Mill and Black Hill. It's like a border. Mm -hmm. Everybody doesn't know Proven Mill and Black Hill. They, they seem to think. It's, See, it's the same area, but it's not split by Prov Mill Roads with Arthur Thompson. He stayed Prov Mill Roads. And uh, so we moved to Green Rig Street, which was just around the corner for Arthur Thompson. And uh, another pal, three years ago, Paul Ferris stayed. He was just a couple of streets away as well. So we were doing Green Rig Street. I was 12. Then my secondary school came up and I went to secondary school. And... Uh, it was a big run school. And guess what it was about next day? Berlin. <laughs> Which is hell and earth. I can say this to now. Mm -hmm. If any of the young ones want to disregard what I'm saying. I've been getting, I've been in there for I was 16 when I got Boston. I know people might say, how are you in there at 16? But at that time, I'll be back in 1977, I got Boston training. And uh, you stayed, you went to Berlin, you stayed there a couple of nights. And... Uh, 16, James, I, I'm not afraid to admit this. This was, what, 40 odd years ago. I was terrified. Mm -hmm. Terrified in Berlin. You know what I mean? You'd always see these stories for a young boy at 16. I know people who know at 40 again for driving a fence or whatever. And same. So I was absolutely terrified. And uh, I'm in this reception area. And all these other hardened crooks and all that. We're in the waiting room it's before you get to see the doctor. They check you for nuts yeah, and all yeah, that, yeah. and the seaside nippers down mm -hmm. there. And 
It's a good one. And if you're cheeky, aye, aye, if you're cheeky, aye, but it's a joke, it's a guy. He's, aye, he's, he's, he's got a big lampshade and all that. And see if you're cheeky. I know it happened loads of times. It would go, ah, you seaside nippers, and you'd shave there. Where's and, seaside nippers? Like uh, crabs? The seaside nippers is the crabs. Crabs? Aye. Yeah, if you think me. Where is it? Shell coats. That's uh-huh. <laughs> so, so, that's, uh, so you were in Boston. What is? What, what, I, what I, I, just, I just turned sixteen, but before that, James, uh, we we'd moved up to, as I say, we were on Green Ridge Street for twelve. My dad left at fourteen. I think he got kicked out at fourteen. My dad had enough of him, but when he got kicked out, we used to go up to my granny. So she stayed in Broyston Avenue, up in Proven Mill, and my granddad. Uh, jokey and uh, they were two fabulous people know what I mean that was my mad sister and I used to sit with my grander and uh, we'd watch the wrestling that was a big thing then Mick McManus uh, Giant Steve Giant uh, Haystacks uh, Big Daddy and all that Mm. so and my uncle Charlie my mad brother he was in the Royal Marines and uh, he was always coming back for places Singapore Hong Kong and bring his wee presents we were were all proud of him in the army and uh, we'd stay stay up my granny's for a couple of weeks my mother getting back with my dad it was a cycle back and down forward but I used to love getting up to my granny and granders and, uh, and then tragedy struck when I was 14 my uncle Charles he was 25 and uh, he was based in Plymouth with the Marines and uh, I think he was in Malta or something and they say in the army a lot of people die Known conflict accidents. I think they were changing a tyre and he got crushed, got died. So I was only 14. And uh, by this time, my granny and grand had moved into the Cold Street flats in Germiston. And uh, we've got, we've got my uncle Charlie up. He was six feet four or something. And he was going to get married to this lassie as well. He'd been in for, he was 16, I think. He'd been in nine year, nearly nine years. I think he was served up for nine year, And he had about a year to go. And he died. I always remember that funeral. It was at Ridgely Cemetery. And all his, uh, bring me, all his comrades for the Marines, they were, they had all the uniforms on and we were at Ridgely Cemetery. And it was very, I can still remember it. It was what, it was 40, it was 40 odd years ago. And I still remember it was a sad occasion. They, they played the last, the last loop. And uh, it was, it was, it was sad. You know what I mean? And uh, I put him in the book I wrote. I, 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 I says to myself, if I'm ever going to write a book, yeah, whatever, I put his photo in. So there's a book in. Mm-hmm. And uh, there was one incident a few years ago. The book's been out six years. About talking with my Uncle Charlie again. And uh, I was stoned at Ridgely Library. I was waiting on somebody for something. And this guy came jogging by. And uh, he was at 40 or something. I, I thought he was a prison officer or... I says, I see a serious crime squad or something. And he went, are you Ian McDonald? And I went, aye. And he went, shook my horn. And he went, glad on you. He says, eh, I've read your book. He says, your, your uncle's a fine soldier. I'm in the Marines. So that gave me a boost. Aye. That made me feel happy. His memory's I mean. still kicking on. Aye, his memory's still trying to kick on and just the, the, the way he says that. But uh, still, still at 14, after the funeral. So my dad's definitely away for the the house at the time and uh, me and my two brothers we were always like hanging about the corner at Greenside Street or the boys but my dad was he was he was strict you know what I mean which was a good thing you know what especially I mean? getting brought up in a scheme because you can you can slip down the you can ah, slip spiral, especially in Black Hill Proven Mill you know what I mean mm-hmm. which they, they were bad areas I know in this day and age Black Hill in Proven Mill you could it's say the they were bad but see, see everywhere now James in Glasgow anywhere Everywhere's bad now, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? There's no, there's no area, it's it's thing where it's, it's hard or soft or whatever. Mm-hmm. But then Black Hill problem was. So my dad eventually left. And we, 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 were, we were a bit scared of him, you know what I mean? And uh, we took the cunt out of my ma, basically. Mm-hmm. We hung about with the boys at the corner and we started car thieving. That's how I got into crime, you know what I mean? And uh, car thieving. And before you know it, we're fun a period about three or four months I'd get to jail about three times car thieving and police assault and uh, I ended up in a place in Larch Grove in Edinburgh Roads it was a place 
Uh, St. John's. I think Johnny Steele. I watched. Aye, yeah, Johnny boy. I watched spoke Johnny. I know Johnny well. I know Johnny. Johnny boy's Jim a good Joe. guy. Give Johnny a shout. Uh, the, a good the, guy. Pals, I mean, so I, I watched Johnny's show. And I remember he Johnny was saying about Larch Grove and that. He speaks mm. a lot about the jails Just and what, the aye. places he was mm -hmm. in and all of that. And he's quite right about the physical abuse that took place. Mm -hmm. I was never sexually assaulted, but I was took out a door him a few times and took up the stair and battered fuck out of you. Is this the guy called the monk? No, that this this I think Johnny was talking Spoke about, about another in, guy, just Joseph got, or something. Just got the jail last year. Ah, he got the jail. Was electrocuting him. All, all the memories came back after watching your interview mm -hmm. with him, uh, with Johnny, and uh, he'd been dorms and that, and uh, I, I hated that. I was in there for an assessment. I was at a children's panel. I was at an assessment. Was was it a go to an approved school or, or whatever? So while I was in there. Uh, I, I was a frightened boy as well in there, not no fear to admit it, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, I got took out a couple of nights and up the stair, battered with these people, they were in the prison officer, and they were taking a liberty, 14-year-old boy, you know what I mean? And they'd make you stand in the corner all night. And uh, so there was people for Black Kill and that in as well, a boy dainty for Black Kill. And I remember, I, I wish I was in his dorm. Guys came up during the night <laughs> with a, a diamond jack and the thing with the bars and they got them out, they escaped. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I wish I was fucking in that so dorm. So escape as well. The Wayne's getting kicked fuck out of here. Were they getting sexually abused as well? They were, they were. And uh, thing me, I, I've just been reading about it the last few years and uh, I've, I don't know if I should make a complaint. Mm -hmm. uh, I wasn't sexually, so, but I was kicked fuck out of here. Mm -hmm. I'm only a wee boy at 14. Mm -hmm. It's a fuck all. That's they physical would, abuse. Aye, that's mean? physical. And they would take you up and they would put you, they'd put you in a dark room on it. Was this priest or anything? Or was it screws? They, they weren't the priests. They were kind of, because this was a, an assessment centre, Larch mm -hmm. Grove. And, uh, but, they, but they, that was they, a kind they, of way I think, was it no way to try and Back the boys to try and discipline them. That was a whole way, I think, when even at schools used to get fucking but, but, scuddy. But, but I know, and seeing that belt, it got outlawed. That uh -huh. belt was sore, you know uh -huh. what I mean? That, 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 that belt used to, I remember in school, I know I'm going to have to try it. That's all right. I was in school and I'd get the belt and the teacher would do it in front of the lasses and you didn't want to show any fear, but that <laughs> belt, you'd stick to the belt. It was fucking sore. <laughs> but you're trying to, your you're trying to keep your face in so the lasses will all go, he's oh, look at them, he's fucking a wee fucking wanker, he's soft cunt, you know what I mean? But uh, that should have all been outlawed as well. And because uh, it would never, it would never happen in this day and age. Was that, was that what you get to jail for? Car theft in the first one? Aye, the car theft uh, first time. My mum was coming to the police stations. I got done a few times. Then, then they kept me in this time for the car theft in the police assault. And I get three weeks in the that's the Slarch Grove. Then I went back up in front of a swing me panel, and uh, I got a year's residential training. And they sent me to a place uh, in Paisley. A place called the Kibble Approved School, and uh, I didn't like it in there either. And I think I was only in there about three months. And uh, there was there was boys during the night. You would see boys greeting for their man or that. Know what I mean? It was it was, it was one of the nice places then. Mm -hmm. And uh, the governor then was. His name was Gardner, we called him Plastic Arse Gardener. <laughs> so he used to come out with this pipe and fucking, he's supposed to get shot in the arse and all of that. So they take you working and they take you in these fields picking turnips. So I, 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 I says in the book, I says, while we're fucking picking turnips up, but Ron's fucking freezing, old Plastic Arse, he's getting the fucking benefits of the money, smoking his fucking pipes, his heart's content. But we were doing that, and uh, so I I got out in the home leave. They let me out in the home leave for, for this approved school. And I remember all my pals saying to me, "Oh, what likes it in there?" They, they thought it was great, mm -hmm. and I says to them, "Bring me." I says, "Look," I says, "It's no all birds and sunshine." I says, "Try picking fucking uh, frozen turnips in a cold fields." And fucking, uh, as a governor, the money's going towards him for his fucking, he always had this pipe and all that. And uh, then I went back 
then I ended up escaping. I escaped to, <laughs> I escaped to fucking uh, the kibble. I, I just, I just hated it, know what I mean? Then I went back to thing that I was only in there in a couple of weeks and at the time stealing cars again. But I used to steal uh, cars, James. Uh, at, at the beginning, it was just joyriding. That then I would get the wheel. People would order a bring me Mark, Mark One Cortina, which was flashy cars. Then mm -hmm. they'd steal the wheels and cassettes. So I was making money like the, like that. And uh, I was up in Green Side Street at a party. And uh, when I was on the run, I've come out. And I was chatting this lassie up. So I was on, I was 14 and a half, I mean, 14 and a half. The record came on, Rod Stewart, tonight's the night. And I went, tonight's the night for me with this wee blonde bird. <laughs> <laughs> so nothing happened. And uh, I went out with my pals after the party. I get a, uh, we got a chase, Royston Road, crashed. Police ran after me. This is a trick to assault them. I try to get a fence. Bang, but at the end of the day, they didn't give a fuck. I get smashed fuck out of with truncheons and all that. So that 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 was me thing with a uh, or a small town crime, wasn't it? Really up aye, to this it. was a small train. So I graduated to Long Regent Schoolboys. And as soon as I turned 16, uh, I was in with the big boys, but on this my 16th birthday, the way it worked out. I got three weeks uh, detention in Boston reports. Detention consisted of eight weeks. Boston could be nine months, 12 months, whatever. So the day I went to Glasgow Sheriff Court for the police assault in this this car, uh, a couple of representatives that worked in the cabal, they came to me and they said, look, we can get you a two-year residential order in the Rossi Farm. And I says, fuck off. I says, two years? I says, I can go and plead guilty of this, which I'm doing anyway with these reports. I says, the sheriff could give me detention eight weeks. Bosto. I says, uh, nine months, ten months, whatever. I says, but if I take two years residential training in Rossi Farm, I says, I'm in the opinion now. I'm going to be a crook. They went, what? They says, so do you know what? I to going to talk up for you. I says, no. I says, because what's the use of doing the two years Rossi Farm, I came back out, then I'm going to get Bosto. I'll get it there with the new. Oh, do you know what that boss was like? No, I says, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> but I did give a fuck. <laughs> but I must have gone back to this approved school. <laughs> so uh, so that's what happened, James. Uh, when this was this is me talking about getting into Berlin. This was my first time. I got sentenced that day to Boston training. I was hoping for detention, but I got Boston training and they took me up to Berlin. And uh, I tell you about it, no, and I could see it for school and all that. And, I must have been looking at it saying I'm destined for this fucking place, you know what I mean? And I get in there and uh, it was it was frightening. And uh, I was sitting, I think the door already says I was sitting in this waiting room and uh, we through the through the older guys, guys with scars and all that, one not myself, you know what I mean? Did anyone try and intimidate you then? Oh they're, no, they were kind of going, We man, you look awful white and all that. And I says, <laughs> fuck. I says, white, I says, fuck, I fucking shit myself, you <laughs> And uh, they says to his, uh, th then I heard the one one of the, the screws coming out of the white coat. You were again to see the doctor and that. And uh, I heard them worry him saying, right, name and number for the thing there, this officer. So I turned around to this guy and I says, name and number. I says, do I still use the same name and number for long again? He went, wee man, you're not in the children's playground anywhere. You're in Berlin. I says, fucking, I, I don't know the name and number. And another guy piped up and went, listen, son. He says, my man's made a chance to get the fucking our numbers up in the bingo there. <laughs> Are you remembering your number for long again? Mm -hmm. So then they shouted me and I just ran in. And I just fucking blubbered, gave the number and they never thing me. They gave me the thing me. There was no seaside nippers. Never got my hair cut. Stayed in Berlin for two days. Absolutely hated it. And uh, I could see out the window, uh, James, to, to Maltus and Rumpelia Street. And I could see the, the, this time the motorway, the canal would thing me. The motorway was there. And I was looking at it who's going like that. I wish I was back with my ma. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Aye, I, you know, I wish I was back with my ma and that. And I, I'm not ashamed to say that. Any 16-year-olds, 
But anyway, at that aye. time, Berlinia, and a wee back, this was mm -hmm. a wee back in 19, this was March 1997. I just turned 16 then. So I went to a place in Berlin two days. I was like, thank fuck out of here. So I went to a place, uh, what's the name of the bus? <laughs> Pullman. Went to Pullman and I go out there and I was in the, the, the reception. And I saw these guys with suits. I went, what the fuck's the CID doing here? The CID turned out that was the prison officers. They didn't wear uniforms. And uh, so they, they've thing me, they've says to us, right, you'll be going to a place called Ali Cali. A lot of the boys that'll be listening to the show, uh, they, they'll know what I'm talking about. Know what I mean? There was a there was a centre called the Allocation Unit, and you went there for a period of about six weeks. Then they assessed you. Were you staying in Pullman? Or they had two open, uh, two two open bostels. One was in Castle Huntley, which is now used for a an open prison. Mm -hmm. But th that time it was a Boston, another one was non side. So you got a six weeks assessment. But wait, wait, and I'll tell you what happened. I was, I've no got a fucking clue. So the, the, the prison officer would get back, get put into this alley Cali, and uh, a couple of hundred prisoners there. So I get put into my cell, and the prison officer says, You've been woke up, I think it was six o'clock, half six in the morning. No, I mean, because it was to give you a shot. It used to give you a shock, mm -hmm. this Boston and detention centre, and it fucking was a shock. He says to me, have that, see your bed sheets and your covers. He says, have that uh, in a bed block. I says, what the fuck's a bed block? Mm -hmm. He says, I want, so the army. He says, I want you to have it all square and fold your sheets mm -hmm. and tuck it in. The creases. Went, and so he says, I'll get a boy to show you what to do. And I went, I mean, I will not be able to fucking do that. Mm -hmm. So the next morning, uh, this boy says, this is be prepared. This is everybody goes to the gym first thing in the morning. This is your door open at half six. He says, You'll be took to the gym. This is half six. The fucking gym. So I'm still fucking trying to make this fucking bed block. I think I made it a circle shape instead of that thing there. Mm -hmm. And I've got these shorts and that on. And uh, I had to be out my cell by this time with one of the prison officers. He went, Go to your fucking cell. You're still not ready. And I got out the cell and I started walking along and he scalped me right in the ear. He went, no, bunny hops. I went, bunny, what the fuck's a bunny hop? But the people in front of me, I was I was just, I was just still in shock with this fucking bed block shite. I didn't even realise that instead of the people walking along the corridor, they had their, they had their horns, James. I don't know if you know what a bunny hop is. Uh, you have your, your horns behind your neck and your fucking bunny no, hop. Yeah, no. Along the fucking, co it's hard as fuck. I know and what a bunny hop was, but I didn't even think you would do that. Oh, you've done that in Boston. Th this was 1977, March. So you bunny hopped all the way like the fucking gym. I kept fucking falling. It was, <laughs> I was, Why that's did they make you do that? I wasn't exactly fat, know what I mean? Why did they make you do that? It was it was to give you a shock, and it mm. was to... It, it was it's to like, embarrass you a bit, I know. It was, it, no? oh, it was embarrassing, and it was, it was like ex-army uh, prison officers, and uh, they were trying to get you in there and I think, well, the goodness here for, for them was they were trying to get you a better person and you don't go back to prison. Mm -hmm. So, done all that, then during the day, they had you cleaning. But they had you cleaning with a fucking toothbrush. Then corridors and all that. Oh, it was a heavy, heavy regime. Mm -hmm. I met a lot of good people in there, so I did as well for, for years ago. And uh, boy Shug O'Donnell, met him. He was four years younger than me, and uh, he was for Berlanna. I still know Shug for this day, and uh, boy Tommy Kilmartin for the Carlton, uh, big boy Frank Ward. There, there was loads of people, Eli Black, there was loads of people I got to know. Got to know. And uh, my first book, I'd never read any books in my life, James. And I says, fuck it, I'm bored in the cell. She's going to read a book. And I remember the book was Papillon. <laughs> of all books, the guy you know what I mean? Like Escaped for a Jew. Ah, yeah, in France. So that, ah, that, yeah. that was the first book. I always remember. I, I, I'm an avid reader just mm. now, still to this day. And this book was loads. And I read that. And uh, my man, my sister Tracy, was coming up to see me. And uh, Gary, by this time, 
he was in a proof school. Uh, Alan, he ended up, Gary ended up in a place called Jailsland in Beef. And uh, Alan ended up in St. John's. So my man said, must have been fucking nothing. I mean, is, many, many jails were you in then before you were 18? Before I was 18, I'd been in Larch Grove, I'd been in the... I'd been in the Kibble. I'd been in a Berlin for the couple of nights at 16. I'd been in a Pullman in Alicali. And that's what I forgot to tell you, James. Mm. After the six weeks the assessment, uh, you go to see the governor and, and see before you get, see the governor, they grab you by the neck. And the boys will tell you this. And they run you right in the fucking door and throw you right in. You've got your name and number to governor, your name. So they decided they were sending me to Castle Huntley. You know I mean? Is the that old there? Aye. So they sent me up there and uh, I was only up there a couple of weeks and this boy got wide with me. Boy for Dundee. He was about 19. I was still 16. And uh, it was dormitories at the time, you know what I mean? And uh I, I, I don't know what his strength ended up. He's been white man, man. I just kicked his face right. He was lying in his bed. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and fucking... So, I settled into Boston. And uh, after six months, you get a blue shirt or a red shirt. Then you move you down to another bit of it. And uh, they had a sports day and all that as well. And uh, once you're near the end, I remember August... I'd been in, my Boston, I'd been in, what was that, Boston, for August, eh, for March 77. I remember when about August 77, I think, I think Elvis Presley died, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And uh, it was the same, I think it was the same same year, Kenny Douglas. I'm into my football and all that, mm -hmm. even though I, I'm, no, I'm no biased. Mm -hmm. Most of my family are all Celtic, you know what I mean? My boy, well, my, boy my last year, Celtic, you know mm -hmm. what I mean? Now I'm Rangers, I, I wouldn't mm. change for the world, you know what I mean? Change now, yeah, no, I'm not changing now, you know what I mean? <laughs> Maybe you should. <laughs> we've, got, we've, got, we've got Stevie Gerrard. I'd, like I'd like to welcome I'd like to welcome Stevie and Alex to the city and uh, say, don't go to Princess Square, go to Princess Pub up Smithy Cross Road. It's for the Rangers supporters. Blue Nose Pub, isn't it? <laughs> Heavy Blue Nose uh -huh. Pub, so don't go there, you know what I mean? That's a wee tip for mm -hmm. you, you know what I mean? But... Uh, I carried Oglish. I always remember uh, being in Boston. He was a record transfer fee, four hundred forty thousand pound. Say, when was it? Was it Liverpool? He went to Liverpool, aye. And that 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 was that same year. Elvis Presley died that year as well, and all that. But I ended up being in six or seven months, and they they let me out for a day release. My man that came up, took me into Dundee, and you were one don't drink, and all that. So he could set you back. Then uh, I was working on the cuckoos in there, James. That, that was my job. Mm -hmm. But I wanted to be in the gardens and it wasn't the, there wasn't any forthcoming. I was saying, I'll get a job in the gardens for the summer. But the time it came up to the summer, they said, says, look, we've got a job, but I like to the cooks that much. And uh, there was boys for Paisley and all that in as well. And they they were like, Ian, get his extra, get his extra food and all that. No, I mean, we'll square you up. Boy Basil Burns mm -hmm. and he, he had a brother, know what I mean? The two of them were in. Big boy Hendy Mally. And uh, I'd give them extra chips, they'd give me bars of soap. No, we things we commodities like that go a long way in prison. Aye. So I enjoyed the cook because I stayed in it. And uh the event I got I got it before seventeenth birthday, because I got the boss through when I was sixteen and three weeks old. And I'd done eleven months, so eventually they released me. A week before I was 17. So there's a twist to this. A lot of people don't know this. They think that that was me just... I've actually had a job, James. Mm -hmm. My ma worked in Forest Hall Hospital. Years ago, it was called the Poor House. Researched that on the book, you know what I mean? And uh, my ma worked in the canteen. My two aunties, they worked in the cookhouse. Uh, Forest Hall, you know, it's it's all boat houses now. Do you know what I'm talking about? Aye, aye, aye. That used to be, did you know that mm -hmm. used to be a hospital? No. Uh, so, so they it's worked there. Yeah. It's always semi-detached houses and that. Yeah. Uh, aye, so, 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 so they used to work there. Yeah. And uh, my ma, she's in the canteen, she'd be talking to, there was, she could talk to these guys. 
a guy dunking the Duncan Lightbody, and there was a guy McKerica. They were heating engineers. You remember the street, Hotspur Street, right? Aye, uh, aye. Mary Hill. Aye. So my get talking and all that. Saying my boys just took the Boston and all that. Blah 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 blah. blah. He says, "I'll take him on." My mum says, "I've got a fucking job." Fucking job. She says, "What is it? Heating engineer?" She says, "Fuck." I go ready, but James, I took it on. They get the guy, the guy Duncan Lightbody. He took a big chance. My mum explained, look. He's just out and he says, well, he's a bit, he's a year later to go to college or what, but I'll give him a chance, put him through it. So, so I done it. I done it for about five months and I was enjoying the job, you know what I mean? But then again, I went to the problem of Malin, a couple suck, of the troops, suck back had in. a stolen car, jumped into it, got a chase, fucking crashed. <laughs> <laughs> Polis again, bought us early fucking <laughs> nut. And that was me back. I went to a place called uh, Long Regend. Mm -hmm. And uh, <laughs> a fucking joke. So, so this was the, the heat. No, but to, to be fair, my mum was coming saying, you fucking stupid bastard. Mm -hmm. Go to her, says, I know, I'm fucking drunk, jumped into this motor, blah, 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 blah. She says, look, Duncan's so willing to take you back. I, I was so embarrassed and I went, how can I get back? He sounds like a really good guy, him. No, he was a, he was a cracking guy and his, his partner was uh, George McCarricker. You know what I mean? Mm. That, this, this is what, this is the year 1978 we're at now, James. 40 years ago. And uh, and I, 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 I actually enjoyed the job. Imagine me, a heating engineer and studio all this mm. stuff. But it's again, in my life. can you imagine if you'd stuck to it as well? How I'd a good job. A heating engineer is uh -huh. a good job. See, or, see or, you were going through all that, Ian, right up to your 18. Was ever a time you done, fuck this? Because the amount of times you were in for 15, 16, <laughs> 17, 18, was there ever a time? I ran you, a mock, uh, see my dad leave, uh -huh. and I just went, fuck it. And I joined that's, in with the that's where everything started spiralling out for you because you had a free for all to do what you wanted. So then, then I made a decision, James, when I was in for the the other car theft and the police I saw battered, I never battered, they battered me, you know what I mean? So I uh, ended up getting, I think I got three months and after the three months my man says, look, Duncan, and that's his what I says, man, I says, I'm too embarrassed to get back to that job. I says, fuck it. I says, I'm just, I'm a life of crime, fuck it. And you just that's accepted me. it then? I just I said, that accepted it then. Then I started uh, going out with a couple of other people and I was travelling over England, and I was I was still still low 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 time. Uh, I was shoplifting, know what I mean? And I had to get a jail Blackpool. <laughs> <laughs> you're not very, you're not a very good criminal. No, no, I know. So jail Blackpool, and I, get, uh, <laughs> sick, I went to a place called Risley. It's in Cheshire, Risley, Grizzly. All the boys for Liverpool, Manchester, and that go here. So I'm in there at eighteen, and uh, we've got remanded. Three week remand or something. Stole a video recorder at the show and all that. They were all beta max and all these were all these, these finger hangs. And uh, so so we got to come back to this bed and breakfast we were staying in, get to jail. So we went to Blackpool Magistrates Court and uh, I got six months. Well, j j just before that in Risley Grizzly, they were shouting, the shouting, calling his jocks and all that. And I was saying to the boys for Liverpool and that. Who the fuck are you calling jocks? My name's fucking it. No, mate, jock. And I says, fuck off. So that, that this guy for Liverpool. <laughs> uh, this guy. Like Elliot's like, how the fuck have I got myself in here? No, so this Shout guy. Shout out to my man, Elliot Reeves, so, 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 letting us use his stuff, man. So, so I'm, trying to, I'm trying to remember everything, James. It's quite hard. I know, you know what I mean? I mean, there's that much. There's, there's, that there's much? loads. We're not even at the fucking, <laughs> the good We've not even bit begun. Shit. No, I mean, this so. This is so, time, Elliot. You sit back so, and relax, big man. So there was, the, the boy for Liverpool, he kept annoying me, and I'm in this Risley Grizzly, right? And uh, I don't know if it's a woman's prison now and all that at the time, or if it's a guy's. So this is 1978, and uh, this guy was annoying me. I says, I'm going to batter his cunt, you know what I mean? Because I was a bit wild and all then. Mm -hmm. So you were allowed radios in, and you get a PP9 battery. And in the book, there's a chapter called Sweaty Sock, mm -hmm. where this guy called me Sweaty Sock. So I says, fuck him. He says, says that to me once, Mayor. Mm -hmm. I'm doing them in. Is that Jock? Jock, aye. Mm -hmm. So what I done is I took my PP9 battery at my radio and he was lying in his bed and I went, how you doing, big man? Still want to call me a sweaty sock? He went, aye, yeah. And I just went like, fuck you. Smashed him right over the soap with the PP9 battery. <laughs> so I bolted 
But they found out it was me and they put me down in the, the block. They call it the block, the segregation mm -hmm. unit. So I was thinking, oh, fuck, I'd smash the scene with this fucking thing, you know what I mean? <laughs> so, but they couldn't really prove it was me. The guy wasn't mm -hmm. sticking them in, you know what I mean? And that, saying that, the guy for Liverpool, in the coming years, I've made, met loads of Liverpool guys, so a lot of good guys. But this was just this instance, mm -hmm. at 18, and uh, they were all singing out their windies because the block was in there going, the jocks in the block, mm -hmm. the jocks in the block, E-I-O-G-O, <laughs> the jocks in the block. And I was all like, ah, fuck you, you know that. But do you think that was just an awe when people were trying to maybe pick on you, bully you kind of? Aye, ah, like, a lot of bullying went on then, James. Start to show a bit of authority, make a name for yourself and make a stand. Anybody says anything, nobody's stopping nah, that way. Nah, and I wasn't taking any shit then, because uh -huh. that'd be in my mind and fucking... To go 100%. Aye, so we, we went to court after the the thing with the sweaty sock incident. You know what I mean? They took mm -hmm. me to court to Blackpool, gave us six months. Guess where they've took me? They've took me to HMP Wall, Liverpool. <laughs> and I went, for fuck's sake. I says, I couldn't for the sweaty sock. I says, mm -hmm. he's going to invite his fucking pals. Nah, his family there. But uh, it turned out, no, I, I was there. And uh, I had a couple of other recharges to get up for in uh, Scotland. So I was only in HMP Walton at the time. And uh, when I was in it, there was an actual escape. You know what I mean? I think there, there was a radio station called, it was called the Metro or something, and two guys actually escaped from Liverpool. And uh, so I was there about six weeks, and I got a letter and that through. You have to get up to Scotland, a couple of charges. I was like, thank fuck you to here. So they transferred me up to a place called Low, Low Newton. Mm -hmm. I think it's a woman's jail now. It's near Durham. It was in there a week or something. Then they took me to Glen Oco, Young Offenders. First time I'd been in there. And they took me up with this other boy, Donnie McDonald, for a uh, canvas Langley relation. And uh, Donnie was, I was only expecting a couple of months. Donnie was expecting 18 months. But it turns out he gets three year. So we're in the same section in, in Glen, Glen Oco, YOY. And uh, Donnie refused to work and all that. 